All right, everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us again for our Tiger Family Talks. If this is your first Tiger Family Talks of the semester, we're so excited that you're joining us. And if you joined us for one of our other past two, welcome back. You get to see all of our smiling faces again. And we're really excited that you're taking advantage of all of these resources that we're offering this semester to help you with information to support your Tiger throughout all of these topics. My name is Lindsay McCrory, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Manager of Parent and Family Programs. Our office is dedicated to supporting current families of our Tigers to help give you the resources and the information and tools to pass along to your Tiger and help support their success. So I'm excited tonight that our topic is supporting your Tiger with scheduling and advising. We've got some great information to share with you. Before we get started though, I wanna go over just a little bit of housekeeping. So hi, welcome, hello. We're so excited to all of you joining us via Zoom and Facebook Live. If you're joining us via Zoom, a couple features that I wanna point out. First, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the chat little feature. The chat is great if you have a quick little question, wanna say hi, you wanna insert an emoji or introduce yourself. That's a great way to connect with other participants that are part of our webinar. The Q&A is where you'll put in your questions for our speakers. So you can submit those questions and then we'll get to all of those at the end of the presentation. If you're joining us via Facebook Live, you can shoot the comments or questions or whatever you want in that comment section of Facebook Live. We're on both platforms to make sure that we're able to answer everything and anything you could need to know. So right now I wanna test out that chat. If everyone can go ahead and put your name and introduce yourself, where are you from? And do you have a freshman tiger or are you an experienced tiger family that's got an upperclassman? Go ahead and put that in the chat for me. I wanna see where y'all are from. And make sure you select all panelists and attendees on the chat feature if you're using Zoom so we can see where everyone's from. Maria is a freshman tiger. Michelle, I know you've joined us before from New Orleans. Two tigers. You are a superwoman. Sean from California, freshman. Awesome. You know we have people on Facebook too. Dana has a freshman. So lots of freshmen. That sounds like the theme today. Makes sense. It, it'll be your Tigers first time doing the scheduling and advising in a different kind of way from the summer with their orientations. From Sunset, Zachary. So we have some local Louisiana people. Rome, Georgia, Texas. Nashville. So it looks like mostly freshmen, but we're coming from all over. So I love to see it. Hi, Shelly. It's great to see you on Facebook. She's one of our family council members. So I'm thrilled that you all decided to join us. Thank you so much for taking the time to introduce yourselves. And yes, as Michelle mentioned, make sure to change the button to all panelists and attendees. Thank you so much, Michelle, for saying that. All right, so we're thankful that you're joining us from all over. We know that a lot of you are joining from diff for different reasons. So maybe your tiger is considering changing their major or they are still undecided or undeclared. Or maybe your tiger is worried about staying on track with our academics and making sure that they graduate on time. Or maybe your tiger just has general questions about the scheduling and advising process or hasn't even relayed those questions to you, but you know they are coming, that process is coming up. Whatever the reason is that you are joining us, we hope you get a wealth of information and resources today. So we know that some of your Tigers are attempting to decide what they wanna do with their future and may not be able to narrow that down. Um, some of them also may just be living day to day and may not even thought about graduation or plan or what that degree plan will look like or, or how to prepare for the future. So whatever the reason may be, as I already said, we're glad you're joining us and you're in the right place. We are joined this evening by Tim Fields, the Coordinator of Orientation and Recruitment and Academic Counselor at the Center for Freshman Year, also known as UCFY. He has plenty of valuable information to share, has been at LSU for a long time, and is an awesome resource for you tonight and moving forward. After we hear from Tim, we'll also be joined by two of our LSU ambassadors who are current LSU students and also have a great perspective to share with you. 
And then if you have any questions at any point for Tim Fields or our student ambassadors, you can put that in the Q&A or the comment section on Facebook Live. So I'm going to stop my share and go ahead and turn it over to Tim. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Hello all and welcome Tigers. I am Tim Fields and I've been a counselor at LSU for quite some time. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting that I come in, I speak with freshmen and I, I guess you look at this kind of haggard face and you, you wonder about credibility issues. And I think when I look at young freshmen's faces, they have credibility issues too, right? I mean, they've mastered the idea of high school. They believe they're ready for the action that it takes to be a successful college student. And sometimes they move through their freshman year without any hiccups at all. But what I want you to, what I want to share with you today is just a little information about where you can go to get resource information. So, First and foremost, I trust that all of you are masked and weathering this pandemic storm. I also hope that you carefully consider and then act on your thoughts and feelings about the long overdue struggle for social justice for all. But in these exciting, turbulent times, it's a challenge to stay focused. And so if you just know that UCFY remains ready to help you to stay on point. So the, the students' first two semesters really are spent in the Center for Freshman Year. We've had a record-breaking freshman class this year. Um, the majority of those freshmen, over 99% of those freshmen, are gonna begin as UCFY students. And as a UCFY student, a student can either declare a major, and if they do declare a major, then they are tracked by that eventual senior college as to what courses they need to take, what kind of GPA they need to maintain. We'll talk a little bit about that. That's called CATS. It's going to be the comprehensive academic tracking system. But students can also be undecided. I mean, essentially what will happen is that, oh, probably three out of 10 students will change their major at some point in time during their freshman year. And what happens is, is that you come to college and you make your decision about your major to really kind of, kind of insulate yourself against all the unknowns. If you've been a pretty good math student or a pretty good English student, or a very good English student, or a very good math student, you kind of take upon yourself to just make the natural progression into those fields where that particular subject is paramount. So what I wanted to do tonight is just to kind of hope that you'll share this with your students and also maybe some of the students will consider it about how you make decisions about a major, how you then chart your progress in that major, and then what we can do in a freshman college in the Olin Career Center and in the Center for Academic Success to make the experience of a freshman and the three or four years after that the best of your lives. So as I mentioned, you come to college, you have to try to lay the groundwork to try to adjust to college life. You try to confirm your major. You try to gauge your readiness for the major. So after the spring semester or possibly after the summer, students are going to leave UCFY and they're gonna to try to enter the senior college that represents the major that they've chosen. Now, some students will choose courses or major programs like nursing or allied health. Those programs don't have a senior college. They essentially are gonna be moving on to professional schools. So all the advising that goes on in the Center for Freshman Year is gonna to try to gauge that, try to help secure that that's the major that they wanna get into and that they're ready for the action that they've chosen. So, Unfortunately, many students choose the first major in college for all the right reasons. What they tend to do is they tend to gauge what they've done well in their high schools. So let me ask the students in the audience these four questions. I'm not expecting an answer, by the way. So the first question is, how many of you thought your high schools were easy? When I run these orientation programs for the Center for Freshman Year, I'll ask this question to groups of 800 or 40. And funny, the ratio is always seems to be the same, that many, over 90%, thought that their high schools were easy. The second question is, how many of them took a study skills course in their high school? The answer to that is, is abysmal. It's less than 1% of the students. And so the third question then becomes, how anxious are you? How much trepidation do you have? 
by being able to do well at LSU and that you'll be a good student at LSU. Once I tally the totals from those responses, usually about 75% have some marked anxiety and may be less inclined to use the services that I'll talk about later. So the telling question though is the last one. So if a student believed that their high school was relatively easy, if they're not quite sure how to study, if they're a little anxious and maybe less inclined to use services, it makes you wonder why over 95% believe that they'd be a B average student at LSU or better, regardless of the major that they choose. And so if you come into university life with that idea, with that expectation, then you're gonna tackle anything that you want. And so that's why many students may not necessarily always struggle, but be challenged by some of the choices that they have as far as their majors. So what we do in the Center for Freshman Year is when a student would come in. Now, students can access our services a lot of different ways, and I'll, I'll talk about UCFY in just a moment. But basically, in a nutshell, a student will go to the Navigate Students app on, on Navigate. They will determine a time and place where they'd like to see a counselor, and then they'll try to make an appointment with that counselor. Now, unfortunately, because of the large incoming class, the record-breaking income class at LSU, the appointment times that we have set aside for our 10 counselors are all booked. Now, on November the 2nd, what will happen is that we will have walk-in appointments available. I'll also go over a few things that'll tell you a little bit more about some of the group advising that we're doing based on your major. So I'll give you all this information. I just wanted to kind of whet your appetites and just kind of show you what's going on. So to get back to the idea of choosing a major, I think if you just repeat, yourself, repeat this going over and over again, become a college scholar before you become a major. Because I think a lot of times students come into university life, convince themselves that they're going to be this particular major for whatever reason, and then maybe do not have the training or maybe even the interest in getting into the, that kind of field. And so what I'll do, let me go ahead and walk you through some of the staff that'll be working with you this year. So when freshmen come in, the Center for Freshman Year is gonna be in 150 Allen Hall. And you can always just use the UCFY at lsu.edu site, contact the, the receptionist, the staff, and she will help connect you with one of the counselors. Now again, because all the appointments are booked, this is really gonna come into play November the 2nd, when you'll be able to hopefully sign in and meet with someone if you do need to discuss some of the changes in the schedule. Now remember, November the 9th is the final day for a student to drop a class. And the only way for you to drop a class is gonna to be to reach out to a counselor. Now you don't have to have a Zoom appointment to reach out with a counselor but you do have to get in touch with one of us via email or, or um, maybe possibly through UCFY and notify them that you'd like to drop the class. So you'll have a number of things that are gonna be available to you. You can access all the information that I'll talk about at this www.lsu.edu backslash university college backslash UCFY. So if you go to the site, it'll talk a little bit about, little bit about what we're gonna do in UCFY. So when a student comes into UCFY, and you can contact us via email, through phone calls, through virtual appointments when they're available, you discuss first year adjustment to school. You try to review something called a degree audit or CATS. Now degree audits and CATS might be foreign terminology to many people. And let's face it, I mean, being a freshman is very much akin to, to being parachuted into a foreign country. You go into the country, you're not sure about the language, you're not sure who to trust as far as information, you don't even know what questions to ask. And so think of UCFY as really a one-stop shop to get information to be directed and to get the information that you might need. So when you come in and talk about your major, either talking about confirming the one that you have or maybe finding one that's more compatible, that's what you use the degree audits and CATS for during a semester. Degree audits are programs that you can access 
through my LSU. You can go to my LSU, student services, degree audit, and then click on current major if you're thinking about your own major. If you want to see how your courses apply to some other major, then when you get to degree audit, then instead of clicking on current major, click on another major. And then you'll be able to go in and see how that other major captures the credits and the courses that you're enrolled in. Now, the thing about degree audits, they're constantly fluid. They're always changing. And so you'll be able to determine how courses apply to your degree, which ones you may need to take in the future, and which categories you need to meet. Now, the one thing that the audit won't do, the audit won't tell you when you need to take certain courses. When your college, let's say, for example, an accounting major would want to know when they need to take their first accounting class. Well, the audit will not tell you that. It will tell you that you'll need to take it, but you touch base with CATS. Now, CATS, again, is Comprehensive Academic Tracking System, and that is often called the degree path or the recommended path. Students can access CATS by going into MyLSU, and when they go into that, you can load catalog.lsu.edu. And when you go to that site, when you go to catalog.lsu.edu, a gray column will open up, and that really is your friend if you're a student at LSU. Go to the site, make sure you're on the 2021 school year, if this is when you begin at LSU, and then when you get to the site, scroll down the gray column. You'll get information about the academic calendar. You'll get information about the general education requirements. And then most importantly, you'll get information about your major. You scroll down to the senior college. And remember, that's, that's a terminology you might not be sure about. So senior college is one of the 10 colleges that where you actually earn your degree. So you'll begin two semesters in the Center for Freshman Year. Then you'll work to meet the requirements of the senior college that you want to enter that offers your major. And then you'll move into that college. If after two semesters you've met the requirements and have that major, then you're on your way. If you get to the end of the spring, but don't quite have the admit requirements, then you can use a higher branch of university college called advising and counseling which is kind of a, a college that you can use as a pre-senior college. So you'll no longer be in the freshman college, but you'll be in this academic center, this advising and counseling center, while you're following your degree plan, trying to get into your major. So the other reasons why you may want to come and see a counselor is to drop a class or resign. So when a student comes in, they sometimes need to drop classes. And remember I mentioned that November the 9th is the final day to drop a class and that you have to see an academic counselor or get word to UCFY at lsu.edu to drop the class. And November the 9th is the final day to do so. Now, in some cases, students have to resign courses or resign from the semester. In those cases, a student will not have to reapply if they resign from the semester but those courses will end and they will receive W's for the classes that they've resigned from. And those courses, those W's are not going to be counted against the three W's students get normally when they drop classes. So from zero to 60 hours, a student has three W's that they can utilize. If you resign, then you don't impact those three drops. So other reasons to come in and see a counselor was to talk about the spring schedule. Now, <laughs> it truly is a maze to try to go through and to figure out what courses you need to get into. So when you use CATS and when you use your degree audit, you're going to feel about what kinds of courses your major requires of you. And what you can do when you go into the, to the registration services, and so essentially when your time comes to register, and when a student is enrolled in the fall semester, there are what's called priorities about when they actually register for the spring. There are four classifications that have first priority. Students who are graduating seniors, students with disabilities, student athletes because of their wicked schedules that they have to maintain, and honor students. So those four categories should have access to their spring schedule 
on October the 25th or 26th. After that time, a student's total number of hours and the number of hours that they're currently enrolled in will determine their position about when they register. So that would mean that a student who is maybe a junior at LSU would have a higher priority than an incoming freshman. But it would also mean that a student who's maybe had some AP credit brought in and maybe has taken some courses while they were in high school would have a better priority than a student who would come in without those things. So you're scheduling, regrettably, as a freshman, but kind of think of it as a rite of passage. You will not have that priority until you earn that priority. And so when you come in and you schedule, it will be based on your number of hours unless you have one of the four categories. Now you can also come in to see a counselor or make a Zoom appointment to change or declare a major or a minor. So a major is really one of the primary reasons why a student comes to LSU. The major is about 120 credit hours, about 40 courses that a student would take that would align with a certain field of study. When you pursue a minor, the minor is something that either complements that major or it's just something that you are interested in and want to pursue it just for your own edification. So I think when you come in and you declare your minor, many, a, a great example would be a student would come in and maybe major in, in um, mass comp and maybe come in as a digital advertising major. So they would also want to have an official minor in business, or maybe they would want a minor in leadership. So that would complement it, that would supplement the major that they've chosen. Now, sometimes when a student tries to come in to change a major, declare a major, to perhaps drop a class, to even seek scheduling for a future semester, you will have what's called a college hold. Now, a college hold is, is annoying, but it's very important because what it does, it helps keep you on track with the major. Now, student holds like my student body, which is something from the wellness office, that would be an example would be an alcohol education program. If students had not gone online to mystudentbody.com and completed the alcohol education or any other wellness hole that may show, they need to go to my student body and do that before they expect clean access to registering for the spring. So if you're a student and you've not done that, go to msb.com uh, or mystudentbody.com and check and see, make sure that you've completed those requirements. Now, another obstacle to registering for the spring is going to be something called incomplete documents. Some of you may have been enrolled in courses that you assumed you have prerequisites met already, either through AP, or through some credits that you've earned elsewhere. LSU has to have those documents in-house. So if you're not sure that your AP credits have, have arrived here, or if you're not sure that the credits that you've earned have shown up, then please, please contact admissions at lsu.edu, admissions at lsu.edu, and check and see and use the words incomplete documents. You just want to make sure that there's nothing outlined that's going to stop you or may delay your spring registration. So if a student wants to come in and make an appointment with a counselor and even use the Navigate app to go in and try to get a walk-in on November the 2nd, on the screen you'll see how to go about doing that. I won't read through that. You guys can, can have access to that. It'll also be on the UCFY website. So as I mentioned before, down at the bottom, Sunday, um, October the 25th, you'll have course scheduling that's gonna be available for the spring, as long as your priorities align and as long as you have your holes addressed. Now, Friday, November the 6th has been moved to November the 9th with our horrific atypical weather that's come through. And so now, Monday, November the 9th is the final day to drop a class. And remember that you have to do it through UCFY. Classes will end around Thanksgiving, but after November the 30th, all the classes will be held remotely. Finals will begin 
end of the first week in December, they'll end on the 12th, and then final grades are due in the registrar's office from the teachers on December the 16th. So there are a number of outfits that really you would benefit from. Remember when I mentioned before the whole idea about if you felt your high schools were easy, if you're not sure about how to study, if you are a little anxious about how well you'll do, then engage the university. Engage the services that are there. I mean, we call it the trinity of services. The Center for Academic Success, the Olin Career Center, the Center for Freshman Year. Those three offices can make your college stay at LSU much more enjoyable because it will bridge any chasms that you might have brought to the university. Even the best students, even the best high school students are really trained to be exceptional high school students. You come to university life, you have an expectation that your high school prepared you, and it may very well have prepared you, but maybe not in the techniques that it makes to make you a better student. So if you're a little leery about how to take notes, how to deal with stress, how to prepare for tests, please touch base with this site. You can see on the screen, they'll have a number of workshops that will be available. You'll have to go to the site and register for the event. But something in the future in November on the test taking skills and stress. You'll have math workshops. Some have already occurred. If you go to the site, you can catch up and find out about the information. You can even access some of these CAS videos that are here that'll kind of help you kind of commiserate with other students to kind of see some of the issues that they've dealt with over the years. So if you kind of feel comfortable Oh, before I, before I jump into the Olin Career Center, let me mention one valuable academic course that you can take. If a student wants to go and take a college course for credit, in the spring semester, you may want to think about taking an education curriculum and instruction course, EDCI, which is an introduction to college study, EDCI 1001. The course's main focus is to upgrade any kind of study skills that you brought with you from high school that you found to be deficient in any way, and it'll train you to be a better student. You can earn three hours of college credit that fits into any degree that has major, that has elective space available, and it is such a comforting part of a freshman's life. To know that it's not a matter of you not being smart enough for college, or your intellect not being ready for college. It's simply a technique issue. So if you go in and do the EDCI 1001 class, the Intro to College Study, try to look into that and take that in the spring semester if you have any reservations how you study. And then also, if you go in and if you have some other questions about careers, you can look at that as well. So the Olin Career Center is located in the Union. If you access career at lsu.edu, you can get information which will help make sure that you're pursuing a compatible major. If you go in and pursue the compatible major, that's going to make your life so much easier. Because I think the bottom line is that college is difficult enough in the right major. If you're pursuing something that's not compatible with your center, then it usually shows in your academic output and your interest. And it's very easy to get distracted if your interest doesn't lie with your major. So if you go to career at lsu.edu, their staff does a wonderful job. I'll freely admit I'm pretty biased. My, my wife, Joyce, works in the career decision-making team as the manager. And her job is to evaluate some of the free online assessments that are available thanks to COVID. And you can also go online and utilize these sites to get more information. Please don't make too many assumptions about your future because it's going to make your present much more difficult to handle. So you can go into career at lsu.edu. You can call them at the 578-2162. Go to the website, look around, and see if you can get a little information. Make sure that the major, before you move on in the spring semester, make sure that it's your best fit. So you can also go to a platform called joinhandshake.com. Joinhandshake.com 
is a way that you connect with the services. Now, the Center for Freshman Year and the Olin Career Center are gonna team up for some free 60-minute workshops to assess and discuss what's called your inner hero. That's kind of cool, I like that, your inner hero, to determine your best fit for a major. So if you go to the website, if you go to career at lsu.edu, if you go to the joinhandshake.com website, you can sign up for the workshops. There was one today, there'll be one tomorrow, there'll be one Thursday. They're free if you have any reservations or if your major just doesn't feel right. This is a great next step. So I love the line, your future starts now. You're writing your history now. And I think what I always tell students over the years that all of you are writers. You're writing the story of your life. And with any good novel, with any good writer, you've been told that you have to revise, revise, revise. And so if you go in, there are a couple of key things that you need to remember to make this saga that you're writing, this beautiful story that you're writing about you. You have to be able to find you in your major. So you have to make the majors compatible. You have to learn how to study them. And then there's really no stopping you. So a couple of things to remember to wind up, to drop a class, you have to contact the UCFY counselor. Remember that November the 9th is the final day for you to drop a class. Remember that currently, because of this record-breaking class, our designated appointment times are filled, but you can still have a face-to-face -face Zoom if you use your walk-in appointment and try to get in starting November the 2nd. So remember, no drops after November the 9th unless there's an appeal that can be filed and is successful. So where do you get information? You can go back to the first slide, I'll go back to it in a second, or look, here it is. This is the website, this is the site that you can access to get information about when these groups are. We will meet these groups that will break down by major. You can go to this site, you can find out when your particular major is gonna have its group meeting. And all you'll need to do is to sign up using the, the link that's provided. So if you're not able to see a counselor, but you know that you benefit from talking to someone about the major and about the courses that are involved, you use this site to go to the group meetings, you drop us a line at UCFY, or you can go into the Freshman Fridays that we have set up from three to four on Fridays by just using this 944 link. You can go to the site, you can visit us during the meeting, and we'll cover academic issues We'll cover holes, we'll cover resignations, we'll cover changing majors, a lot of the things that just make your college life a little more manageable. So to keep your scholarships, or if you're a Louisiana resident, tops, active and alive, you can actually drop down to part-time at this point in time in the semester. As long as you earn the number of annual hours that you need to continue on tops. If you're a Louisiana student, on tops, if you drop down to part-time, you can still keep your tops active for next fall. As long as you maintain a 2.0 GPA, you can have your tops for the spring. By the end of the spring, if you have 24 credit hours of courses that you're enrolled in, not courses that you've tested out of. So if you have 24 hours in courses you've earned credit in, then you can go in and earn at least a 2.3 then you can keep TOPS active for fall semester, as long as you renew. Some of you have what's called a stipend, so you may, may have to maintain a 3.0 with, that, with those 24 hours. If you not, cannot maintain the 3.0, but still maintain the 24 hours, then the only thing you sacrifice is the stipend. You can still maintain whatever percentage of tuition. So then another tip, remember about the EDCI class, the college study skills class. You can go to the Center for Academic Success site, drop down, earn better grades, and there's a gold mine there about information, about learning tips and tools for skills you may never have needed in your, in your academic center. All right, so let me get out of here. I have a bunch of tremendous, colleagues that are gonna come on. The whole element about 
about giving one of these talks as wonderful and informative as it can be. There's just so much information. So please try to touch base with some of the people that can help you answer these questions. Go to catalog.lsu.edu, get information about your major, contact me. My email is tfield1 at lsu.edu. And I'll be Thank you, Lillian. You really sound like a master scheduler. I love it. I love how you lay everything out. <laughs> okay, so next up, Noah. Um, what tips do you have for students with the scheduling process? Yeah, so Lillian's spot on there. Uh, when that schedule booklet drops, um, and start early. If you're starting the scheduling process, when when your scheduling opens up, you're setting yourself up for, for failure. Uh, I'll go a week before and make an Excel document and lay out, here's where these classes fit in. If this is full, here's another one. I wasn't planning on taking econ this semester, but music appreciation filled up. So let me just jump over to that one. I know it can fill that same slot. Also, that gives you the chance to kind of see where they fit together and plan out your week. Um, I remember, I think it was, my, it was my second semester, I made the mistake of not leaving myself a lunch break um, and got very hangry a, a lot of days. Um, so if afternoons, is uh, it, you've left yourself time for lunch, you time to go to a day, now not just is there availability, but does availability work for your schedule? So I say definitely come in with a plan, come in with a backup plan, and know how that fits you in your life. And is it the schedule that sets the student that you, that your child is, or the student that you are up for success? Awesome, thank you, Noah. And you were cutting up just a little bit, but I know you had some great points there. And um, Definitely have a plan B, a plan C, just be ready to go when it comes time to schedule. Um, so next we'll start um, with Lillian. So what tips do you have for students to set themselves up for success and stay on track with their major? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I like to use is my eight semester plan um, alongside with CATS, like Mr. Tim was talking about, as well as your degree audit. I don't really like the degree audit because it can be so confusing. There's like thousands of classes on six different pull down tabs and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I like to use my eight semester plan and it just kind of maps everything out semester by semester. And you don't have to go in that order, but being able to see it all laid out, I can maybe pick from this semester, oh, I don't really wanna take chemistry yet. So maybe I'll take bio two instead. Um, and these are all things that I did. I tried to put off chemistry too as long as I could and my eight semester plan let me do that. Um, you also wanna make sure like, so I will be going to grad school after my undergraduate at LSU. You want to like maybe go on websites and look at their prerequisites and make sure that you're fulfilling those requirements. Your, uh, your semester plans will have spaces for electives most likely and you want to fill those up with important classes rather than the easy ones you know sometimes um, another thing about that is that kind of you want to kind of weight your schedule to where it's good for you if you know that you don't want to take chemistry biology micro and all of those really core science classes at one time you can do that as long as you are fulfilling your prerequisites and like doing the classes that you're supposed to and fulfilling CATS, you can be successful with whatever classes you decide to do. Another thing that I would say is do not let yourself get behind really, really far because a lot of times I'm so guilty of this. I hate asking for help. I am so prideful. I'm like, no, I can do it myself. I got this. And then all of a sudden, 
I was two weeks behind and I was not understanding the concepts. And then another week from that, we were moved on to a new concept that required the mastery of concept one. And it can be detrimental. Don't let your student get behind like that. Let them know that it is okay to go to the Center for Academic Success. Let them know that it is a blessing that we have counselors that we can go talk to who can point us in the right direction. We have lots and lots of amenities here at LSU that a lot of colleges don't have. So it's really important for them to take advantage of that and they will be successful. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Lillian. Um, Noah, what steps did you take to stay on track with your major? Yeah, so I think Lily makes a great point there about don't schedule your five hardest classes during the same semester because just the fatigue of that as a student, we all have those semesters that are harder than others, but as much as you can, talk to students who are maybe upperclassmen in the major and they can kind of give you a better sense of how do I spread these out so I'm not taking the hardest class and the second hardest class at the same time. Then just on top of that, just because, just because it's your freshman year, those classes are still important. Uh, and you'll see a lot of times where may, junior and senior classes have prerequisites that go back to that freshman year. And so check on those classes early, uh, whether it's a class for, your, for a minor maybe that isn't included in your normal plan, or if it's just one of those upper level classes, make sure that you've planned ahead to where you've gotten the prereqs in early so that you're prepared three years down the line when you're in that senior year. Great, thank you, Noah. Okay, last question, and we'll start this one with Noah. So the question is, have you ever changed your major? And what suggestions do you have for students who are considering changing their major? Yeah, so kind of to Tim's point, uh, I started college as a 17 year old, and I, I think we all have been 17 year olds and can remember what decision making processes we have at our, at our ability. I came into college, and I said, well, I'm pretty good at math and I like problem solving. I guess I'll go mechanical engineering. Maybe not the best way to set myself up for the next 40 years of a career. And so as I, as I got to college, I got to take a lot of those intro classes. And I also got to talk with a lot of other students, especially upperclassmen, about what they've done on internships, what they've done in other classes, and see if that was the passion area. And for me, I, Mechanical engineering didn't end up being my passion. But what I ended up finding was through talking to those same students, industrial engineering, with a lot of that, those same kind of math and problem solving things that originally led me to the, the, the mechanical engineering major with all kinds of other human, human resources and facility planning things that really excited me. And after after talking to professors in the industrial engineering department who were able to give me a lot of great advice of what those careers look like in the real world uh, and getting to go on internships with, and co-ops to really see what, what those were, I, I knew I'd, I'd gotten to the right place after, after making that switch freshman year. Hey, well, I, I love these guys. Where were you guys when I was working UCFY? You know, it's just you become so enlightened right after you spend a little time in the system. And so to expect that you need to be enlightened when you first step foot into a new world, I don't know if that's really conducive to mental health. And so when you go in, you, you, you try to connect with the services that are helpful. And Lillian, I love the, the, the whole idea about it is a pride issue. I mean, you, you've, you've predicated your, your personality on what you've accomplished in your high school. And so you, it's like, and I always try to remind kids, okay, remember when you moved from middle school to high school? What was that first year like? You know, what was that like? And they're terrified and they, they don't want to remember it. But it's, it's the same thing. And so it, it takes a little while. Do you feel out of sorts? Absolutely. Does it terrify you? Absolutely. Does it get better? It can, but you have to engage it. You have to go all in. Great. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, Noah, for that answer. That, that was awesome. 
Um, and Lillian, we're gonna end this one with you. So what are your normal recommendations for students who are changing their major? Yeah, so I personally have never changed my major. I have stuck with Kines, uh ever since I declared as a freshman. Um, but what I would say, I've also had friends who have changed their major. What I would say and what I have seen them do is absolutely go talk to your advisor. Uh, I really do believe that there is a difference between wanting to change your major because things are hard right now and wanting to change your major because you really do not fit in the place that you are. And your advisor can see those flags. They know the questions to ask. They know the resources to give you to determine whether or not it's just difficult right now and you need some extra help or we really do need to find you a different major where you will be happier. And obviously there is nothing wrong with changing your major. I forgot the statistic, but lots of people do it. <laughs> it's just scary because it's so unknown. Um, also, the way that I chose my major that I'm really excited for it to be my profession one day is I took a career assessment test in high school and like we were talking about before, the Oling Career Center also offers that same career assessment test or probably a few different ones. But that is a great way if your student is looking to change their major, if they've determined that that is the path that they need to take. Um, that is a great way to give them some insight into what they feel good about, all of their hobbies and things that they do well in school. It's a great way to compile everything and give them a major out of it. Um, it's definitely a great resource that I think everybody should take use of if they're feeling even a little bit nervous about their major, um, because I was when I chose PT, but I took that career assessment and what was number one? <laughs> Physical therapy. <laughs> it, it made me happy. It made me feel fulfilled and it just gave me, um, some excitement to, nice to be, be a validated. part of that major. Very nice to be validated. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yes, that's that's awesome. That's really important. And if anything, people have time right now to just be creative and, and make up their mind on what they want to be doing. So thank you, Lillian and Noah and Mr. Tim for joining in too, um, for sharing so many useful tips about your experience with scheduling and advising. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay now for the rest of our webinar. Thank you so much, Carly. Now we've gotten some great questions rolling in throughout this presentation as you have spoken. So I, I wanna thank our speakers again, as Carly said. I'm gonna jump right into these questions. If you have more, go ahead and put them on the comment section via Facebook Live, or you can put them in the Q&A on Zoom. Our first question is from Ivy. My tiger is a freshman, but had her initial fall advising in Manship because of Spring Invitational. She's talked to her Manship advisor several times, including about classes for spring. Is she required to still meet with UCFY advisor before she registers for spring? Or is the meeting with the Manship advisor sufficient? I think that relates to any students who may have met with the senior college advisor already. And Tim, I'll turn it to you. Yeah, and I think it's a great question. I, I think what happens many times is that students don't know that they have to meet with someone until they actually try to register. And so now you will have what's called, I mentioned it before, the incomplete documents, students, um, some, some lagging credit that doesn't get here in time, and it creates a, a hold for a student. Also, if they are, um, some of the senior colleges require their students to talk to faculty in the College of Engineering. Um, I tell you what, why don't you just email me and I'll be glad to, to check it on an individual basis and see if we can address that for you guys. Thank you, Tim. We'll put your email address in the chat in just a moment for Tim Fields. Um, another question, so I'll, you, you Tim again, you mentioned the process for dropping a course is that students, if they want to, before November 9th, have to meet with a UCFY counselor. Is that the same for any of our upperclassmen families and students who are joining tonight? No, another good question. Um, once a student leaves the Center for Freshman Year, they have earned the right to own their schedule. So they are able to drop those courses as long as there aren't holes that are blocking the access to the hole. The reason why the freshmen are restricted is because of its direct impact on financial aid. And then it gives us an opportunity to educate them about CATS and about the degree audits when they come in. So. 
Awesome. Thank you. Probably another question for you, Tim. You're on the hot seat right now. Hey, wait. How much money am I making on this? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> LSU's got that covered for you. So uh, from Maria asks, will students be contacted by an academic advisor before scheduling, or does a student need to make an appointment to be able to select classes? So are advisors okay. reaching out, or is this up to the student? Sure, sure. Well, and you know, COVID has really flipped our world around, and, and in the fall semester, what had happened is that when if it's an incoming student who's going to start school in the spring, then once they go through admissions and establish a major, then historically the senior college reaches out to the student, even though they're in the freshman college, the senior college reaches out to the student and then builds a tentative schedule, and then the student can discuss it, discuss it with a faculty member. If the student's undecided, then I usually handle most of those schedules, and they can always just contact UCFY. But really, if... Um, if you go through an orientation, you're going to get faculty clearance anyway. But if you ever have a question, just go to the UCFY email or just email me. Thank you. Um, yeah. when, when can a freshman student in the honors program make an appointment to schedule classes for spring semester? <coughs> well, if they're an honors kid, usually, depending on the major that they have. So if, if they're honors, they should have that that October 25th date that they can access their, their spring schedule. Now that's aside from if a kid would be an engineering student who's also in the honors college, then engineering may have a restriction that says that they have to go in and they have to seek out a faculty advisor and sit down with them. My advice would be, or my uh, suggestion would be, just whatever major the student has, go to the LSU site, look up the senior college, access the site, and send them that query directly. And they'll, they'll notify them if they have to meet or not. And again, T Field One, I mean, I'll be, I'll be more, than, more than happy to address it. Thank you, Tim. I love you giving out that email, it's perfect. <laughs> Shannon asked, where can students find an eight semester plan? And that's from Shannon Miller. We did put the general catalog in there, but I know that Lillian and Noah both talked about that. Do you wanna mention where to find the plan? So let me ask you this, Lindsay. I'll be able to share screen and just show them quickly. If, um, if, would, that, would that be okay? Yeah, or? That is perfect. That's very helpful. Okay. So, so what you do is you, when you go to the LSU site, see if I can find it here. The way that you find it is that you go to catalog.lsu.edu. And when you go to the site, first thing that you do, you make sure that the year aligns with when you've begun. And so you go in, you, this, most of the freshmen are going to be 2021. And this is a go-to place for really anything. So if you want to find out about the academic calendar for the spring, if you want to find out information about some of fees and expenses, if you want to see the general education categories, like you could click on it, scroll down to the bottom of the gen ed categories. If you want to see what courses are going to be humanities, you click on humanities. So it's very nice, very easy. You pop up, give a little course description about what's there. So, but if you want to kind of find out about majors, let's say that the student that, or the students that call had a question about psych. And so if they would know that their major would be in HSS, which it is, then you would click on humanities and social sciences. This is the support staff. These are the majors that are affiliated with the HSS college. You find Department of Psych, click on it. Scroll down to where it's a major. Psych also happens to be a minor, but for the most part, you'll look at it from a major. Click on it. And what I loved is uh, some of the student help was that they told you about critical requirements. So these are what keep a student on track in a major. The thing about, I think the thing that terrorizes or terrifies a lot of students is that they look at a, a track and they believe they have to take all of these courses in the first semester. So you may or may not be eligible to do some of those courses. So they are immediately believe that they're off track within that major. So if you know the major, if the major's declared, if this kid has a psych major, then the only thing that keeps them on track in a first semester like the fall is a C or better in English one, and at least a 2.5 CUM and LSU GPA at the end of the fall. If they don't have math, if they don't have a foreign language, if they don't have a natural science, you will eventually have to take those to graduate, but you do not have to take them in the first semester 
simply because they're showing up with the first semester critical requirement. Does that kind of, you think, answer the question? Yeah, I think that's great. It's really helpful to see that visual for a lot of our yeah, families. Catalog.lsu.edu. Go there, pick out your year, pick out your college, and go get them. That is perfect. Tim, you're still on the hot seat. So uh, Jennifer asks on Facebook, when do students declare a minor? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think, you know, you'll, in the, at the end of a first semester, when your options seem to be endless, it's kind of hard. Your minor should always complement your college major. So that's kind of use the example about using digital advi uh, advertising and then maybe having a, having a business minor. So it should always be something that plays off your major. Um, or maybe it's just something that you enjoy. Let's say maybe you're a pre-law student who wants to get into philosophy and, and can't sell it to your parents as a major. And so, so you can sell it maybe as a minor. And you can declare that minor really at any time. The only thing that you're restricted in a, in a freshman college is you cannot declare two majors. You can't have a double major. You have to wait until you enter your senior college to get the second major. But you can declare the minor anytime. Just reach out to UCFY, drop us a line, uh, drop us an email, or um, set up a Zoom meeting. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to yeah. turn this question over to Lillian because I know you're a kinesiology major, so you've done a lot of science courses. One of our parents and Shannon in the chat asked about biology lab and her student not having a great educational experience. It's not exactly her question, but I wanted to reach out to you. What are some resources for biology specifically for science majors that you think um, the student could utilize? For biology specifically, so in all of my major science courses, I always go to the SI sessions, which is supplemental instruction. And that is a, uh, a student who took the class before with either with that same professor or with some other professor. But they've taken that class already. They received, I believe, an A in that class. And now they are qualified to uh, hold weekly or biweekly sessions to help you understand the concepts that you might not, especially during these online lectures, if you're not getting that face-to-face -face time with, um, with those professors, um, it can be helpful to meet with your SI leader and they will dive deeper into those concepts. They have a whole slot of time totally for those concepts. They can point you to what is important because they have had that professor already and they know what they tend to focus on. They can give you worksheets for help and one thing that some of my friends have run into trouble with is with, with online also. I have work during the SI session. I can't go. So what do you do in that situation? Well, I know for a fact for my chemistry SI, if you continue to uh, still do those worksheets, if you do that worksheet, you try your best on it, use your textbook, your notes, do whatever you can to put something down on that, um, on that worksheet and then email it to them. They will grade, he will grade it for me and send it back and say, here's what you can do better. Like contact me if you need any more help. These students are singled out by the university to help you. And that is probably the biggest resource that I've used for my science courses. Uh, I don't know where I would be without some of my SI leaders. It definitely would not be uh, here. <laughs> but yeah, that would be what I go for. I think that's really helpful feedback. I do appreciate you sharing. SI is awesome. If any of you missed our last webinar that we did, it was on October 6th. We'll put that in the chat as well, the link to some resources to help support your students' academic success. I think it really does go hand in hand with what we're talking about tonight for advising and scheduling. I know that some people in the chat and also via Q&A right now are submitting questions or concerns about the challenges regarding what the spring semester will look like. I do want to share that LSU has not made a final decision, so we don't have any news regarding what the course modality will look like for the spring semester. We will share that with all of our families on our, on our list as soon as we can. And um, we are hopeful that they'll have more news to share. And, and a lot of families and students have, you know, indicated that they'd really like to know prior to scheduling their courses, you know, if the course is gonna be in person or online. So the university administration is aware of that request. 
and, and we'll, we'll get more information and share it as we can. I have another question and I know we're, we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask this, this last question. And if anybody else has something, you can put it in the chat. Um, so John Hickman asks to you, Tim, how do students go all in as you referenced when they can't because they aren't used to, they can't socialize as normal? Oh, that's good. That's good. Thanks for asking that, John. I think, you know, sometimes what you can do, if you've chosen a major, if you're comfortable with the major, many of those majors have groups that can meet with students, socially distanced um, situations where they can kind of share issues that certain, certain problems with certain majors, certain courses. I mean, I think College of Science students, when I look at College of Science students' schedules and I'm looking at calculus and chemistry and biology and a foreign language, I think, you know, you, you do, as Lillian mentioned, sometimes you do kind of stack the deck against you. And I think that tends to inhibit you and you don't want to get out. You don't want to be known as that person that's not able to really make at, it at LSU. And so I think kind of connecting with the Center for Academic Success, but most importantly, connecting with, the, with CFY. I mean, if you drop an email to UCFY about how to relate, we'll connect you with your faculty and also with the department. And then we can see if we can start those groups going. Maybe also if you're living in a dorm, the, the RAs in the dorms do a wonderful job trying to make those connections. And really, unfortunately, it's the world that we live in as far as feeling alienated. And so some of that is very common. The best that we can do right now is try to limit that as much as we can and try to connect you with the services that will that'll be fruitful to you. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Also, I want to shoot it over to Noah and Lillian. The LSU Ambassadors has a program to connect students. Do either of you want to share more about that? I don't exactly remember what it's called. Uh, I know it's kind of like a buddy system. It's AMB Basic Connections. Yes, that's what it is. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Um, there's so much running around in AMB right now that my head is spinning. But it is called AMB Connections, and your student can um, basically like contact that thing and be almost assigned like an ambassador buddy. So I, I am a part of it and I cannot wait to get my person. Um, and you kind of be, it's like, it's like, I don't even know what to call it. Buddies, basically, you can go on coffee dates. If you're comfortable being in person, you can have Zoom dates. It's just a great way for your student to meet someone who is all about LSU and can help them find people and make more friends and even get involved on campus. Um, I'm very excited to be a part of it. I can't wait to be my buddy. I would encourage every single student at LSU to be a part of it. I know that that's a lot of people, but it would be so cool to have tons and tons of freshmen feel better about their college experience because they were given an AMB buddy. Thank you, Lillian. We'll also put that um, in the chat, the AMB Connections form in just a moment. And um, you can also email us if anybody's interested in that buddy system. Uh, it is geared towards LSU freshmen to be paired with an upperclassman with similar interests that is an LSU ambassador, has lots of great information to share and can just be that, you know, friendly face and that, that you know, kind person. So you can email us. We have other resources in place too to help socialize your tiger if they're feeling lonely at all, even though that's not the topic of tonight. I know that it's also a big thing on a lot of our families' minds. So email us at lsufamily at lsu.edu. I'm putting that in the chat now for us. Okay, so really, I really, yeah, one more thing. I just, I just want to encourage the students to, you know, to use that Freshman Friday website and then connect that because those counselors are dealing with this. The way that UCFY operates, we're all mental health counselors. We're either doing, uh, we're all academic counselors, but all of our backgrounds are either in professional counseling or social work. So we kind of screen these issues and then we can connect those students with services that that will be beneficial. So, so please, I mean, we never want a, a person to feel alienated at the very institution that they so look forward to attend. So, so yes, we can help make that happen. 
Thank you so much, Tim. That's a great point. And that's an awesome segue for me. I want to talk about our upcoming webinars that we're hosting. And so our next webinar will be held on Tuesday, November 10th at 6 p.m. And it's all about supporting your tiger's emotional wellness. We will have staff from mental health services and the student health center to talk about that. I know it's on a lot of your students' minds and maybe going through a lot of different emotions. And I think it'd be a great webinar to participate in. We'll also be doing one on November 17th about supporting your tiger as they return home for the holidays. It's a big topic and it will be an adjustment that a lot of families don't always prepare for. So we encourage you to, to connect with us again on our upcoming webinars. As always, if you have questions for our panelists, our speakers who spoke tonight, or questions for our office, or if we did not get to answer your question, please email us. We will contact you. We will connect you with Tim, with Noah, with Lillian. If you think it'd be helpful for your tiger to speak one-on-one -on -one maybe with Noah or Lillian because they are rock stars and such pros at the scheduling process, that's possible too. We're really here as a community to help support you and your tiger, and we mean it when we say reach out to us. So definitely participate in our upcoming webinars. Also email our office. I'll have those details at the end of this presentation again. Um, just a quick little plug. If you are not a member of the Family Association, we encourage you to take advantage of that. You can join via our website, lsu.edu slash join. We have so many great benefits as a part of your Family Association membership, including first and foremost, just staying in the know and current about what's going on around campus and really having a closer partnership with our office and the university. Also going to do a quick plug for our virtual silent auction that starts this Thursday. Our launch party will be held on Thursday, October 22nd at 6 p.m. via Facebook Live. If you're already joining us on Facebook, just head right back to our page on Thursday. We have so many great items to have you bid on there. You can see some here. We've got, uh, you know, like traveling tiger delta airlines package there's a sign coach o football for all of our big tiger fans um, we have an opportunity to take a picture with all of the national championship trophy the heisman trophy lots of really great stuff all of the proceeds benefit our student emergency support fund which is a cause that needs so much support we are assisting students who are facing any kind of emergency making sure they're able to graduate from a house fire to a death in the family to those affected by hurricanes or COVID-19. We've had a lot of requests and applications this year and we really need your support for our emergency support fund. I have a little QR code here on the screen. We'd love for you to take a, our survey. So if you have the opportunity, we're gonna put it in the chat to that direct link to the survey or if you have your phone handy, if you don't mind showing your camera to that QR code that you see in the circle, we'll a little pop-up will drop down from the top of your screen. Fill out that super short survey. We just want your feedback about today. We want to hear what you liked. We also want to know what other topics are important to you so we can make sure that we are providing our Tiger families with the best content and the resources that you need when you need it. So I'm going to leave that up for just a moment. If there are any last questions, go ahead and put those in the chat. And I wanna thank our panelists one more time. Y'all were phenomenal. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Tuesday evening. Put our, conf our contact information on the screen. Any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. So we'll, we'll stay on for just a moment, but I'm gonna end the presentation. If you have any last minute questions, I'll still be in the chat. Carly will be in the chat. With that, I wanna thank all of you. Wanna wish best of luck to your Tigers through this scheduling process. I hope they do well and they, and they really get a lot out of this presentation. And we thank you again. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs>